Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. Today we kick off our new beginner series by actually building a new knife. And I kind of got this idea from Eric from the Rivers Experience, and I'll link his channel up here, where he does a separate build in his kind of daily vlog series. Uh, and I figured that would be a good thing. So what I'm going to do is build a knife from beginning to end with basic tools. I'm going to use my grinder, but I'm not going to use the press. It's basically going to be anvil and hammer and forge. So we are going to start with this which is also something a lot of beginners would use, which is a big leaf spring. Well, not too big of a leaf spring. Uh, a buddy of mine gave me, uh, gave me this, gave me two of these actually. And oddly enough, another friend just dropped off three of these. So I got enough leaf spring to last me forever. So we're gonna be using leaf spring, which is typically 5160, and I've actually used the other one of this, so I know I can heat treat it. And we're gonna make uh, one of my thresher hunting knives. So I'm going to take you through that, all of the gotchas on the forging, and then we'll spend a lot of time on each step, and each of those will become a video. So it'll take us a little while to build this knife, but you guys are going to get a detailed explanation of every step. So let's get this in the forge, and we'll get going. Sometimes you have to be careful taking down leaf springs because they're under tension. This one actually wasn't, so it was just a matter of cutting the band and taking out this center bolt. So let's talk about our plan. We've got a piece of 5160, but it's curled up at the end. So the first thing we're gonna do is put this over the end of the an anvil and we're gonna uncurl this. Step two, our bar is gonna look something like this. Okay, let's talk about fish lips. Fish lips is when you hammer straight down on both of these ends and this piece starts to fold over and starts to do this and then as you hit it more and more you'll get it looking like this okay that's what we don't want in order to avoid that what we're going to do is we're going to hit on a 45 and we're going to knock these corners in until they're flat. So let's draw this a little bigger. So there's our steel. We're going to start knocking this top corner in. We actually want, eventually want this to be like this. Okay. We can't just keep hammering on this side because you will start to get some kind of weird distortion here. So what we're actually going to do is kind of round out both sides like this and then as we hammer here this will flatten this out and then you'll get this all right so i said we wanted this why do we want that because this is going to end up being this and we want this straight when we forge it because as we hammer out these bevels that will cause this to curve up. And we're going to do that near the very end. We're going to put this shape in it. Then we'll start to put a bit of this. We're going to do most of this on the grinder. But we'll put the shape of this so we know where it is. And then we'll start thinning out our handle. And as I hammer here, you'll notice that this arc is going to appear here. And we'll do some interesting techniques to straighten this out. And then at the very end, we're just going to hammer on this, bring this out. We'll do a little hammering here to put this recurve in. 
All right, so that's our plan. Let's go do it. So let's talk about this leaf spring. It's 3 8 inches thick, so it's really thick. So I'm going to have to move a lot of steel here to thin this out. You'll notice I put the entire leaf spring in the forge, and I haven't cut it up into what I think I need. And the reason for that is it's just easier to hold with your hand instead of trying to fool around with tongs, um, especially because this is 3 8 thick. I don't have tongs that even hold that, so just to mess with things, especially if you're doing 45s, it tends to move a lot, so it's much easier to just hold it in your hand. At the end, I'll just cut off what I need and have the rest of the leaf spring for next time. I realize that not everyone's gonna have an actual anvil, but for those that do, this is a good example of using every part of your anvil. The horn, the back, the step, the side, everything can be used. You can see that I certainly tried to use all of them to get this thing straight. I managed to get the curve out of the end of the leaf spring, but there was this piece at the end that folded over. It just wasn't worth spending the time on, so I ended up taking that to the grinder. Now it's time to start working on the tip of the knife. This is just a series of hitting it on a 45, then going back to the flat and taking out that distortion and just keep going back and forth. For this portion of forging the point, I'm using the flat side of the hammer because I don't want to spread metal apart. I just want to move it around and flatten it. I've just flipped it over so I can round out the other side of the tip. Now that I've hammered in both corners, I can start to form the tip and not have to worry about the fish lips. I am still hammering on a 45 for most of this work anyway. Notice how I'm holding the work off of the edge of the anvil, and this lets me get close to that tip without having to worry about hitting the anvil. Now I'm going to move over to the cross peen hammer, and if you remember from our discussion on forging basics, I'm doing that so I can spread the metal lengthwise. Basically, I'm just trying to thin it out at this point. The cross peen has left those lengthwise hammer marks. Now I'm using the rounding hammer just to stretch it out, and that's what's really thinning out our blade. Starting with stock that's 3 8 in thickness is a lot of work. And here I am back with the cross beam hammer. This was a lot of work just to thin this blade out. And guys, just something to think about. Your anvil normally has a rounded edge and a more crisp, straight edge. And uh, if you don't have a cross beam hammer, just put your work on that rounded edge and just hit it there. And that'll give you the same effect. And guys, I'm certainly no expert at forging, so you're gonna see some things that others would probably do better, or certainly quicker, but I get the job done. Now it's just more refining of the tip and thinning out the blade, refining and thinning. You may see me hold up the work against my anvil, and what I'm doing is measuring. I like to mark my anvil with some key sizes, like the size of the swedge, the size of the handle. So while I'm forging, I have those references. Now it's time to move on to the handle. I'm starting by reducing the width and then stretching it out.
And just a reminder, guys, keep track of where the blade edge is and when you're hammering out the handle, which side the contour is going to be. It's easy to get confused, especially with hammering in the bevel sweeps the blade up, thinking that the blade edge is the other side. Now I'm using the horn of the anvil to put that finger well in, and we'll make that more pronounced with the cross beam hammer later. Now that the handle's starting to thin out, it's starting to look like a blade. We'll have a little more to do and then it'll really start looking like a blade. Because I keep hammering on the same side to put that contour in the handle, I'm getting more of a curve than I want. Here I'm trying to straighten that out, but I remember in a little while a much better way to do this. Now I'm just using the edge of the anvil just to put some marks where I think the handle is going to end. It's time to put that recurve in that's close to the Ricasso. So now's the time to start putting in that curve in the blade. I'm striking the edge with the round part of the hammer and that's slowly curving it up. It's really important to spend the same amount of time on each side of the blade so you get it nice and even. Here I'm measuring it against my template. I've noticed that it's a bit more curved than I'd like it, so the best way to take out a curve like that, whack it on the top of the anvil a few times. You can definitely see it's starting to look a lot more like a knife now. I have a little bit more work to do on the handle, but now I'm starting to pay attention to how flat it is. Now I'm starting to planish it, and that means using light blows just to flatten it out and remove any marks in it. We've done as much forging as we're going to do on this blade. Time to cut it off. We're going to put it back in the forge and let it cool down as the forge cools down to let it anneal. So we're done the forging on this knife. Um, it's still got some thickness to it. It's probably a quarter inch uh, in the tang here, but that's fine. We'll take that down later. Um, it's a little narrower this way than, uh, than the template, but that's fine. I'm actually okay with that. We're just going to make it a tiny bit smaller. Um, we've got our area set where the finger well is going to be and, uh, and the handle. So we just got to do some refinement but it's pretty good. Um, we didn't, you know, forging is just a matter of kind of time and effort. Um, I think I got it close enough, um, you know, and I think this is where most beginners uh, are going to end. Um, you'll get it close enough and then, you know, we'll, we'll get it to the, uh, to the grinder. So um, we got through some of the basic techniques, putting in bevels, how the steel moves, some techniques on, you know, how to use your anvil. So uh, now we're going to take it to the grinder and we'll do some refinement on it. But that'll be the next episode, guys. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this part one of forging your first beginner blade. On the next episode, we're going to refine the profile and we'll start to grind this knife. We'll see you on the next one.